Shalom and Shalom family. Shalom and Shalom. Welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to Trumpet's Call. I'm Amaria. I am posting this video. It's a snippet of a video that I did last year about the coming CMEs and the solar storms and its link to the darkness. And I wanted to share with you this portion of the video as it is relevant for the time that we're in right now. Okay, so I urge you to watch it and take note of what is said here. As you all know, we are in a very, very active time with regard to the sun. It has been flaring like crazy. And uh, we have had so far eight solar flares in just a few days. And the auroras that accompany these geomagnetic storms is a sign. They were to be a sign for us. And the Father had given us indication to look for the auroras. Well, the auroras were here. Friday night, the auroras were present in all but one of the 50 states. They were not present in Hawaii. But all the other states were able to witness and view auroras. This indeed was a sign. So I encourage you to watch the video and make note of what the Father told me regarding the auroras and the fact that the aurora borealises or the northern lights were a sign. Shalom, shalom. In Joel chapter 2 verse 31, the sun shall be turned to darkness and the moon into blood before the great and terrible day of Yahuwah comes. Now we know that the day of Yahuwah fully expressed happens when he draws the nations to the valley of Je Jehoshaphat, Yehoshaphat. When he draws them there, he puts a hook in the jaw and he draws them there to fight against his nation that has been brought back from the sword, has been brought back to their land and is living in peace and security and in safety. When he brings those nations against us to take spoil, as is written in Ezekiel chapter 38, if you don't know what I'm talking about, I've got lesson after lesson after lesson on this topic. I can't, you know, reteach everything that I've taught. So just look up the series on the book of Revelation on the end of days that I've been teaching recently. I talk all about this. So when he brings them against us, when we're back in our nation, we're back in our land, and then Yahusha returns to fight for us, that is officially the culmination of the day of Yahuwah. Okay, but the day of Yahuwah begins when the judgment begins on Babylon, but it's culminated when that happens. Okay, so before the great and terrible day of Yahuwah comes, the sun shall be darkened and the moon turned to blood. Before, note that please, before, it happens before. Here you have on the screen, an image of an aurora borealis, okay? So this aurora is essentially uh, the effect of charged particles in our atmosphere from the sun, solar particles that come from the sun in the form of a solar flare or coronal mass ejection um, in our atmosphere. And these things come by way of the poles of the, the um, the covering that we have over the earth to protect it from solar radiation, the magnetic field around the earth. Because our magnetic field has been weakening and weakening and weakening due to the solar um, activity that's coming and also due to the, the magnetic pole shift that's happening right now, more and more of these charged particles are able to come into our atmosphere. If you don't want to know what I'm talking about, once again, you're going to have to go back to previous videos because I can't reteach everything that I've taught. Okay, I've taught on this extensively. Okay, so there's there we're in the middle of the Earth flipping its its poles, not flipping upside down. That's not what I'm saying. I'm not telling you that the Earth is going to flip upside down. What I'm saying is that the Earth has magnetic poles. So when you open up a compass and your compass points to true north, that's a magnetic pole. What I'm saying is that that magnetic pole is shifting. It's been in the process of shifting for a long time now. And magnetic north is somewhere around Siberia right now. And so it's shifting. And when the earth is in the midst of the shifting, 
shifting magnetic fields, the fields are weakening. They, they're weakening, meaning more solar particles can come in, more sunlight can come in. That's part of the reason why the sun's been so bright and so hot, because more sol solar particles are able to come in because there's not protection from it. And when they're able to come in, they manifest themselves as auroras, aurora borealis in the north, okay, or southern lights in the south. And what we're seeing here is that these, these northern lights are coming farther and farther and farther south, and the southern lights are coming farther and farther and farther north, okay? They reported uh, southern lights or northern lights in Turkey uh, a couple of weeks ago. They're, they've been seeing them in Arizona. They've been seeing them in Florida. I believe back in March of this year, they were seen in Florida. And it's just not typical that they would come that far south. Typically, the northern lights maintain themselves in Canada, really. We shouldn't really be seeing them this far south. The reason we're seeing them this far south is because more solar activity is able to come into our atmosphere due to the weakening poles, the weakening magnetic field of the earth. And once again, I want to encourage you, if you don't want to know what I'm saying, please go back and look at those videos because I, I go into detail regarding these things, okay? The reason I'm mentioning this is because the father told me that the increased auroral activity is a sign of the darkness. It's a sign that the darkness is coming, okay? It's a sign. So another sign we have is when, when the attack comes. When the attack comes, know that the darkness is nigh at hand. And especially when you see these auroras, you know that it's nigh at hand. And these things are increasing already. And they're increasing now. So it's a sign that the gathering of the nation of Yeshua is nigh at hand. This article says solar superstorm could wipe out the internet for weeks and do worse. It says late last month, India's newly launched um, Atilya, Aditya uh, sun studying mission captured a glimpse of a solar flare. With a recent increase in solar activity, scientists are concerned about what it might mean for the internet. The internet has come of age during a time when the sun has been relatively quiet and now is entering a more active time. The solar, the sun enters into a more active and more passive time every 11 years. And so now we're entering into a more uh, active time of the sun called a solar maximum phase. We've been in a solar minimum phase. And the professor, uh, Peter Beckman of George Mason University, per a Fox weather report, it is, it's the first time in human history that there's been an intersection of increased solar activity with our dependence on the internet and our global economic dependence on the internet. Becker is working with the GMU and the Naval Research Laboratory to create an early warning system for solar flares. According to CBS News, the sun is currently in solar cycle 25. These 11 year cycles have been recorded since 1755. At the beginning of our current cycle, the National Weather Service predicted that peak sunspot activity would begin happening in 2025 with overall activity of the cycle being fairly weak, says CBS. But earlier this month, researchers determined that the cycle has ramped up much faster than originally predicted. They were thinking that solar cycle, um, the solar maximum cycle would begin in 2025. But now they're saying, hmm, we think it's happening either at the end of 2023 or the beginning of 2024 because things are ramping up according to them. For example, a severe geomagnetic storm emerged in April, a th the third geomagnetic storm of that magnitude since the solar cycle began, the outlet said. Still, researchers expect that the cycle will have an average activity compared to the others over the past century. Solar flares occur when magnetic energy built up in the solar atmosphere is suddenly released and radiation is emitted across virtually the entire electromagnetic spectrum, NASA explains. The amount of energy released is the equivalent of, of millions of 100 megaton hydrogen bombs exploding at the same time, the space, say the space agency. The first solar flare recorded in astronomical literature was on September 1st, 1859. Two scientists, 
Richard C. Carrington and Richard Hodgson were independently observing sunspots at the time when they viewed a large flare in white light. That flare, known as the Carrington event, caused electric spikes to, that knocked out the telegraph system. Back then, that was the main method for long-distance communication. Today, solar flares also pose a risk for our modern modes of communication. In 2021, researchers from the University of California, Irvine, warned that a solar superstorm could result in an internet apocalypse that they said were only, were only partly prepared for. No, you're not prepared. How could you be prepared for it? This is just double talk. You can't possibly be prepared for it. Because when the sun unleashes its um, solar particles toward the earth, it's going to explode just about everything electrical, okay? And if you're a, study, a student of history and you study the Carrington event, I've done a video on it. This is all a part of the video that I did on this subject. I've talked about it extensively. The Carrington event was an event that took place in 1855 where the solar activity was such that it emitted a massive solar X flare and the energy the particles from this flare traveled to Earth and it exploded in bright auroras all over the all over the world. I saw that the auroras went as far as Cuba. Cuba. They had auroral activity as far south as Cuba. That's that's insane for it to go that far south. But days before this Carrington event happened, the sun was already actively flaring. It was actively flaring during that time. So that days before the Carrington event, it's September 1st, 1859, they were having solar activity and they were causing flares to be seen as far south as Florida. So this was a warning or a precursor event before the main event happened. And in the same way, the father's telling us that when these things are coming, we're going to see solar flares happening that would cause Aurora Borealis more frequently in different places of the world and family. These things are happening now. And so it's a sign of the times that we're in. The time is now. We must prepare. We must prepare. It goes on to say a coronal mass ejection, CME, popularly known as a solar storm, is a directional ejection, <coughs> pardon me, of a large mass of highly <clears throat> pardon me, highly magnetic particles from the sun. When the earth is in di a direct path of the CME, these magnetized and charged solar particles will interact with the earth's magnetic field and produce several effects, the researchers explained. In addition to spectacular auroral displays, they produce magnetically induced currents on the earth's surface through electromagnetic induction. Based on the length of the CME, in extreme cases, these currents have the potential to enter and damage long distance cable that constitute the backbone of the internet. What they're not saying in this article is that not only would it affect the internet, it would affect the power grid. They're not saying that because they don't want to cause people to panic. But the reality of the situation is that, situation is that everything that's electrical will be affected. Okay, When the Carrington event occurred in 1859, we did not have widespread electricity in every home. They didn't have the internet. They had the telegraph machines though, and the telegraph machines worked on DC power, not AC power as we most of us use now. But even then, the energy from this event was so strong that it caused these telegraph machines to spark fire, and it created fire in different places, fires in different places across the United States. And the telegraph wires were down for days due to, this, to, due to these extra charged particles in the atmosphere. And this was at a time when we did not have internet and electricity in every home, okay? So these, these things are happening, things are coming to the earth that the father is preparing us for. He's going to bring us into our arc of safety. He's gonna take us where we need to be, but we need to be aware that they're coming, okay? We need to be aware. All of these auroras that we've been seeing recently is a sign. It's a sign of the coming darkness. Okay. It's a sign. So we should be aware. Here's another example of an aurora. It's colorful displays of electromagnetically charged 
light that you're seeing in the heavenly realms. And it's a sign of an increase in electrically, um, electromagnetically charged particles in the solar, excuse me, in the atmosphere. Okay. They're a sign of the darkness. The father told me, he said, when you see an increase in these things, know that the darkness is nigh at hand. That's what I was told. And so I'm telling you, and they're already increasing. 